Hello, everyone. Okay, so um, we were talking about the turtle module and how to make some basic shapes. So right here we have a program that creates a square. You know, it has all these 90 degree left turns and then it moves forward 200 spaces. If I run it, and I can see it makes a square. It moves forward, does a 90 degree turn to the left, moves forward again, and so on and so on. Basically doing the same thing four times, as you can see in the code. Forward left, forward left, forward left, forward left. So, you know, one of the great things about programming, or I should say uh, to become a great programmer is to write efficient code and less like bloated code that's unnecessary and whenever you see code like this where it's the same actions being repeated again and again you um, want to you know write that in a more efficient way and there's tools to do so one of them is called the for loop so I know that the main actions being performed are just these two um, commands right here forward 200 and left 90. Uh, the three lines on the top and the one on the bottom you don't really gotta worry about. So how can I get my entire diagram of a square done knowing that all I have to use are these two commands? Well we have this tool in programming called a for loop. And um, let me just show you a basic example without the whole turtle thing of a for loop. Real simple example. So the way it goes is for i, and it doesn't have to be i, it could be x or whatever. It's just for some variable, but typically use i. For i in range and the range is okay how many times do i want this loop to run so if i want it to run five times i'm going to put a five there you end the for loop statement in a semicolon or a colon and as you'll see for the next lines it has to be indented um usually you can just hit tab or the typical ways you just hit the space bar four times whichever you know you're gonna remember to do do that but make sure it's indented because the way Python works it will only understand that a code is a part of the loop if it's indented like this so um, now I'm just gonna write some code that I want to run five times like um, you know, let's just keep it simple. Hello world. So if I run this program, you can see in my output console, we have hello world one, two, three, four, five times. So this for loop is just a really great way of repeating a line of code, especially if you know exactly how many times you want to run it but one thing to note is like i is a variable and the value of i gets changed every loop so i starts at zero and goes up one two three and let's actually see how that works so all right the the value of i is and then we'll print out the variable i. And you'll actually see exactly how this works. So, as you see in that output, the value of i starts the first loop at zero. i starts at zero by default. It goes up one, two, three, four. And then, before the value or it gets to five, it stops that loop, you know. Um, I should say it stops the loop when i gets to 5. So even though it says range 5, um, if you look at the value of i, 
it's going to exit the loop. Or, I mean, the final loop is at four, I should say. I'm trying to be cr like correct with this. But if I print out the value of i after the loop, the value of i after the loop is, and if we run this, you see it's still four. So I will basically stop this whole process before it gets to five. But the way computers work, they stay like a lot of programming languages. Whenever you um, have a program that kind of counts something on its own, or especially with arrays, which we'll learn about later, you start at zero and count up from there so the range is five because the loop is performed five times but the value of i does not um become five itself since we start counting at zero just something to keep in mind uh, especially for later and note the print statement line four is not a part of the for loop because as you can see it's not indented over like the print statement on line two is. If it was a part of the for loop, the value of i after the loop would print just as many times as the original print statement. In fact, if I tab it over, it will. Because now when I tab it over, it'll count it as a part of the loop. And now we can see it prints out both statements uh, five times. So that indentation is key because it signifies what's going to be a part of the loop and what is not going to be a part of the loop. But anyway, now let's go back to our program about making the square. So if I know that to make a square, we just repeat that same set of directions, forward 200, left 90, and we repeat it four times, we can set up a for loop for that. So for i in range 4, always end it with the colon, and make sure the, the lines of code that you want in the for loop are tabbed over. You can just hit the tab key on your keyboard, and it'll automatically space it for you. We can run it, and we see, look, now it makes the square for us in a lot less lines of code. So before we had to, um, before the for loop, we had to literally repeat this process four times like that, taking up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different lines of code. You know, to get the same action using a for loop, we condense it down to basically three lines of code to perform the same task, much more efficient than it was before. Uh, we also had a program that uh, created like a bunch of circles. So you know, t dot circle. Let's just do sixty, uh, and let's get a little fancy. T dot pen up forward 120 well t dot forward t dot forward 120 t dot uh, pen down t dot circle 60 and you know if we kept doing this over and over again basically after the initial setup uh, like this we run the code and we see it makes a circle moves forward makes another circle moves forward makes another circle and so on and so on so again this is another program where we're just repeating a process of code over and over again. Uh, again, I, four times basically. 
So let's look at how it starts to repeat. We create the circle, lift the pen up, move forward so it doesn't leave the uh, trail from circle to circle, put the pen down, draw another circle, put the pen up. Okay, so by the time we get to line eight, it starts repeating again as soon as we put the pen down. So what we can do is get rid of lines nine to 17 and just use this set of code because we know that's what's causing the that's what's um basically the bulk of the program what we were using again and again so i got four i in range four don't forget the colon make sure all the stuff is tabbed over now we have this condensed to one two three four five lines of code We'll run it and you can see if we've done it right yep we get the same exact result in a lot less um, code a lot more efficient coding uh, and we have to move forward um, an extra time but you know whatever doesn't really matter so yeah like turns out these loops can save you a lot of time especially once you start getting the hang of this and really knowing what you're doing because you know this set of uh five lines of code is a lot more manageable than you know how much was it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thir thirteen lines versus five you know all because of the for loop so again if you ever come across a particular bit of code where you know you're just repeating a process again and again use um, use a for loop to make things more manageable and much easier to deal with and then you know for loops are great because they can allow you to then focus on other things like what if I wanted to create a longer chain of circles well I can move backwards at the beginning backward like 200 uh, let's do t dot pen up t dot pen down right so and you can see i've increased the range that i'm working with so i can now modify my program to like do different things i can focus on other aspects of the code now i now that i know i have the basic uh circle chain sort of set up for me and all i need to do is modify the range i can then focus on okay if I want to make the chain of circles longer, like how can I go about doing that? All right, well, you know, this seems to be going out of bounds a little bit, so let's change the value backwards to like 400, let's say. And we'll run the code again. And, you know, this is going to take a while. Let me speed it up to two. There we go. So you can see, all right now i can sort of again focus on the other aspects of my program that are about like chaining creating that chain of circles you know once that's taken care of i can then start to do other things with the program to make it like fit your needs more and more so this is just one example of like how useful these loops can be and hopefully you found the video useful as well and you're able to utilize this in the future.